So this is a quick warning before this episode really starts. I have to warn you, there is a lot of wind. So much wind that it might annoy you. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the channel. I am racing against the clock. I've got about 30 minutes before the sun sets. I've come to one of the famous landmarks in West Yorkshire, the Calder Valley that overlooks Tomerden. It overlooks Hebden Bridge, famous Studley Pike. Now I do apologize if it's a little bit windy. You can't escape the wind here. It's forever windy in this valley, but I'm hoping to try and get a really nice image. In the last few days, we've had a little sprinkling of snow. It's like icing sugar that's just covering the tops of the moorland. And when the sun sets, I'm hoping for a nice little pink glow that just casts the light over the snow. So I'm heading up there, or I'm racing up there to see if I can find a composition, something that's nice and catching the light of the sun, and hopefully it'll lead on to Sudley Pike. Fingers crossed, I'll get a good image, but I've got a race. So onwards and upwards, and off we go. Now I'm running out of time and I'm slightly out of breath and I'm definitely thinking that I underestimate how long it would A take me to drive here and B walk up here and I've not walked directly up the front I'm coming from a distance. Now I've opted to bring just one lens which is my 24 to 200 mil lens. It's a great little travel lens, but it, like I've said in some earlier videos, it just offers that flexibility of being able to go quite wide and zoom in. And given the change in circumstances, it's probably the best option. Plus, I don't really have time to switch lenses and faff about, so hoping it's the right decision. It is a sharp lens, it's really good actually. Uh, yeah. So, onwards and upwards, I carry on, but it's tiring and the snow is not exactly making it easy to traverse. Now, I just quickly stopped because I found something and the light was looking pretty good. Westerly Pike was this big pink cloud that was passing by, so I was like, quick, take a picture. But obviously I wanted to try and get something that was framed nicely. So I spotted this rock just here. So I framed up my camera. So I've got this in the foreground and then this leads into Studley Pike. It's not, it's, it's nothing special. So, and what I did is I took two pictures. I took one for the exposure of the rock and the snow here. So that's highlighted. And obviously I then took another picture for the sky where Studley Pike is and I underexposed it. So you've got the sky there nice and pink and I've got this highlighted on the rock and then what I will do is I'll blend these two images together and hopefully they'll combine to make something relatively nice. I do apologise for the wind, it is very windy up here. Now because I was rushing around I didn't really pay much attention to the movement of the grass and because I didn't have my shutter speed set fast enough some of the motion of the foreground and the background grass can be seen moving yet some of it is actually static so this distracts a little bit. I'm actually quite happy with the composition because you've got a foreground interest that leads onto the back with Studley Pike and then you've got the setting sun. Now I had a master plan when I got to the top and it quickly disintegrated. It was so windy when I got up there and the light had just started to disappear so there was no way I was going to make it across to Studley Pike. So I quickly got my tripod out and I tried to find some kind of composition. I couldn't really find anything that stood out but the sun was setting and the whole of the horizon line looked absolutely beautiful. It was pink and rich full of colour. So what I decided to do is get a pano shot and take multiple images that I could stitch together to create a long shot. Of Studley Pike. Now when I got the images and I stitched them together I was quite pleasantly surprised how it actually turned out. I'm quite happy with this image. Now it's nothing spectacular to look at and compositionally it's very off balance because you've got Studley Pike on the top left hand side and you've got the rock. 
on the left hand side so it's not really balanced very well but considering it was just so erratic up there and I was really rushing and the light was fading I'm, I'm quite happy with how it turned out just just for the colors and just the fact that I actually managed to get an image and if I do crop the left hand side it does balance the image out it's not too bad well that was a bit of a nightmare wasn't it it's just way too windy and also I completely missed the light I just yeah you need to get up here a lot sooner I give it 30 minutes when I got down to the bottom yeah I had like 35 minutes to get up here so trying to film and trying to actually get up here find the composition what a rookie mistake you definitely need more time so at least I'm aware of that I mean I knew that anyway but and also it's so difficult with the with the microphone because it's just so windy I don't have any gloves it's freezing so I did try doing a pano shot it was just so rushed because I was trying to catch the last bit of the light that was you know catching the sun on those top of those clouds but I took a few shots, I'll stitch them together. No idea how they'll pan out, so pan out, pan out. Uh, yeah, but if you're watching this, give yourself time. Like, it's it's good to chase the light. It is a bit of a rush, because you're like, ah, can I get there in time? But you need to give yourself enough time to get into a place to get yourself a composition, you know? It's all right getting there and only having 20 minutes and taking a quick snap of random stuff. But if you want to get a nice composition, you know, you need time to find the subjects, find layers, and you need to, you, know, you, you need time, which is what I didn't have. So lesson learned, but still it was good to get out. And now I'll head on back down. Oh my hands, bloody freezing. <laughs> Uh, just as I'm on my way back down, it's starting to hail. And there's like a big, thick cloud of fog that's descended down into Tombardon. So I'm just hoping and praying that the roads haven't gone icy in the town that I've been over there because I've got to drive back down. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's not really gone according to plan, has it? Seems to be a recurring theme with this channel. Nothing goes according to plan. But you know, I still had fun. It was still a bit of a manic few moments up there. I'm just trying to walk down here without falling over. But I don't know if the footage I shot up there with me talking to camera will be even usable because of just how windy it was. So I'm reshooting this bit and just saying, you, you need time. You can't give yourself 30 minutes to try and get to a location before the sun sets and find the composition. It's just not gonna happen. You need a good hour or two to head up there, film, and to find a location and find a composition or multiple compositions. Oh no, someone's, oh, one second. So, lessons learned. Yeah, it's been a bit of a funky, a funky hour or so up at the Studley Pike, but nonetheless, it was quite fun. So anyway, I'm heading down to the car as the weather conditions have gone grim. And yeah, hopefully I'll be there in a sec. Whew. Well, that was a manic 20, 30 minutes, wasn't it? And let's face it, that didn't go quite according to plan. Now, I don't know whether or not the footage that I shot up at the top, you can even hear it because it was so windy. So I made a couple of schoolboy errors, really. A, I just did not give myself light <laughs> enough time to basically get to the location and find a composition. So 
I had, by the time I got to the bottom here where I parked the car, I had like 35 minutes to get to the top before the sun set. And that was including doing the filming as well. So that was, that was a big mistake. I need to get here at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours before, because then you give yourself time to get to the location and it gives you time to try and find uh, a composition, something that works, you know, within your frame. So yeah, that was the first mistake. And then the second mistake is just underestimating how windy it is up there. There is no coverage at all from trees or anything to block the wind. So my microphone was just getting absolutely hammered. So there's a good chance that a lot of the footage that I've shot, you're not even gonna be able to hear a word I'm saying. So, but it does seem to be a recurring theme, doesn't it? It's not gone according to plan. But anyway, it was still fun, still good to get out. And then who knows, you know, maybe the pano shot was okay. It probably isn't, it's probably terrible. But, you know, I got out and that's the main thing. So, but if you do enjoy the content, <laughs> you do enjoy watching me make mistake after mistake, hit the like button. You know, it does help. It helps the channel get out to more people. And if you want to see more of my ramblings and more of my <laughs> adventures and mishaps, then yeah, hit the subscribe button. And yeah, you'll get notifications when the next episode comes out. So. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Enjoy the rest of your day, afternoon, morning, wherever you are in the world. I will catch you on the next episode. Have a great week. Adios.